Let's talk about five resilient business strategies to supersize and grow your business. Sharon Hornell, Karen, who's going to talk about specifically beauty and skincare industry today. And as I'm thinking about it, it really applies to all our businesses. How resilient, and I guess that's my question at the end of the day, is how resilient do you consider your business right now? And what are some ideas and ways and strategies you can increase re resilience to make sure that your business grows and scales and lasts for the long term? I don't think any of us get in business thinking, oh, we're only going to be in business for a year. We're going to do a quick money grab and then we're done. We're out. We'll do something else. Nobody wants to do that. At least nobody I've ever talked to and worked with. We want to build something that lasts. We, at some point in our lives and careers, decide, I want to build a legacy business. I want to build a long-term impact the world type of business, not just a uh, a quick way to make a buck. We're creating something more in the world, not just a job for ourselves. Although when I first started out and left corporate America, and while I was working in corporate America, a lot of the businesses I was involved in were just another income stream. Uh, so how do we build a resilient business? What's most important? Well, number one, create quality products and services. If you're not solving people's problems, if you're not doing market research and speaking to a specific audience, you're going to struggle. And the chance of you making it through the ups and downs that happen whenever we're involved in a business, as in life, uh, you're, you're more likely to throw in the towel and give up and quit than you are to stick to it no matter what. Uh, craft a brand identity for your business, your products and services, and keep that consistent throughout probably time. Not time because sometimes our brands morph and change, but for the most part, they're consistent. They're one thing. And if there's going to be a change, it's another long-term change. I think of, uh, I live by Minnesota 3M, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, and their logo changed a couple of times and their branding from, I think it was blue to red to blue again, or it could be red to blue to whatever. It it was like for 25 years and then they changed it to update it and then they changed it again. But it's like a long-term change, not just a short change. So decide what your identity is, what your brand is, and be consistent and clear and concise with that. That's how we get people's attention. That's how they know who we are and what we stand for. Uh, make sure that you're doing product innovation and development. I, Every industry I've ever been involved in, I try to find out what's on the leading edge because why do I want to just be one more player or another competitor or another player in a particular industry if I don't have something new, unique, and different and better for the people that I'm here to serve, to offer, then why am I even going to get involved in that business? So ask yourself and look at your product offerings and what you do and how you do it and Always be looking for ways to continually improve what you're doing and how you're doing it for people. And guess what? All you have to do is ask them. Ask your current customers. Ask your past customers. Ask your future customers, your audience, the people you're targeting as leads. What do they want? What are their problems? How can you serve them better? Because they will tell you. Uh, the, the thing is, they tell people, but the vast majority of business owners don't bother listening and then incorporating what they hear into their products and services and offerings. And that's a huge way to gain a competitive advantage. Uh, there's always e-commerce. And I don't know if we've talked about e-commerce much. Maybe we'll do a, a day on e-commerce strategies soon. But when it comes to e-commerce, are you offering your products and services online? Do you have an online presence? Do you have a user-friendly website? Nowadays, if people can't find you on their mobile devices... Chances are they're going to go to one of your competitors or they're going to go to somebody else for a solution because that's what people are doing now. Billions of people, literally billions of people have mobile devices that they're walking around with all the time, which is, you know, more computing capacity than ever existed before. So are you taking advantage of that and making sure that you're available in the World Wide Web and in the online world? Chances are if you're listening to me, you are, but millions of businesses still don't and are not doing that. I know so many business owners that have zero online or social media presence, like none. And they don't think that it's important because they've always been a brick and mortar business. Well, guess what? Or a brick and mortar local business. Even brick and mortar local businesses can do so much better by having an e-commerce or an, uh, some kind of a website where they at least educate people on their products and services. Uh, customer engagement and retention do you have a strategy for that? Do you have a process or processes that are built into your business and built into your systems for engaging with customers? 
guess what? Again, they will tell us everything we need to know if we're willing to ask and listen to the answers. Uh, and, and, and then again, what is your resiliency number? If you had to give yourself a number on a scale of one to 10, one being not very resilient, you're willing to throw in the towel and give up pretty easily to 10, where would you consider yourself right now? I think of myself and in, in, in my businesses about a seven right now, because I've learned that the older I get, the less BS I have to deal with or will choose to deal with. I uh, had a sudden cardiac arrest in 2010. And the, one of the biggest lessons that came out of that was I have the ability to say I choose not to participate in this drama, in this nonsense, in this stuff that doesn't make sense, but sucks up all our time with conflict and struggles and strife. And so uh, I would say I used to be extremely resilient, like a nine or a 10. I mean, I wouldn't quit no matter what. I was like a, a bull in a china shop or a, a dog with a bone. I mean, I was hanging on and protecting that no matter what. And now I step back and I take a broader perspective of things and I ask myself, is it in alignment with who I am and who I want to show up as and how I want to be in the world? And if the answer is no, then the answer is no to whatever it is that's that's causing that. And I just will let that go. So I guess it's selective resilience. I'm resilient when I know it's in alignment with who I am and my core values. If it's not, smell you later. All right, that's all I've got today. Share in the comments below if you're brave, how resilient your business is. If you've been in business for like 10 years, I'm going to say you've got a very high resilience number. If you uh, are just starting out, I would say, what are some ways and strategies that you're going to use to ensure that you don't just give up or quit? Or if a big challenge or problem comes down the pipe, because I guarantee they're going to, you're not going to throw in the towel. How do you right now handle conflict? We're talking about conflict in the Let's Grow Annual Challenge today and relationships. What do you do? How do you handle that so that you don't lose or quit or give up? All right, that's it. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.